We have, as a species, long suffered the results of a civilization with foundations for understandings built upon outdated belief systems, and a funded academic institution in which one is rewarded for repetition rather than that of pioneering a theory which could shine a light upon the oldest, most controversial corners of human civilization. Where did we come from? How old is human civilization? These are questions which we have not only witnessed being ignored by the majority of mainstream academia, but have also shown, through what we believe is overwhelming evidence to prove that this same entity entrusted with the accurate account of human history, has not only concealed a reality which threatens many mainstream belief systems, but also the modern attested theory of evolution as a whole. Entire chapters of human history, and also, more than likely, entire branch of subspecies of giant humanoid remains removed from the history books, concealed within kilometers of hidden artifacts hidden away, withheld from the masses, often in favor of profitable avenues, born out of stability of understandings which powerful institutions grown out of which, in turn, protect their own survival, rather than that of the allowance of furthering the understandings of the common man. There is not only strong evidence still to be found all over the planet of past, highly advanced civilizations which displayed capabilities far beyond that of any civilization within the permitted timelines of investigations, but prove the tremendous age of some of these ancient ruins. These relics, far from mere ruins, are in reality more accurately described as the fossilized remains of human activities that do not just stretch a few hundred thousand years into the ancient past but due to the time needed to develop such features, are indicative of a civilization nearly or possibly over a million years in age. The great stones within the Western Wall, for example, are not only far in excess of any weights the already studied permitted ancient ancestors within known history were capable of moving, or indeed using as building blocks. But fortunately, this site still possesses ancient wooden stakes, presumably once used within the method of construction, which regardless of the fact that the method is still an enigma to modern understandings, the wood, in contrast to stone relics, can indicate an age as to when this foundation was undertaken, petrified, fossilized, now stone blocks of what was once wood that are unquestionably of an incredible age, support our argument of this far-spanning, currently dismissed chapter of ancient human civilization, which, if embraced by mainstream science, would not only prove this past beyond doubt, but would in turn threaten many currently highly profitable and as such extremely powerful and in turn influential belief systems and the institutions which have grown up around them in regards to ancient human origins and development. Fossilized tree roots can also be found upon the megalithic blocks of Gornea Shoria. Many other sites, like that of the inexplicable ancient temples of Petra, in some of the less publicized areas of the site, display immense erosion regardless of the site's relatively sheltered location. It seems that many of these oldest of sites not only often lay below several feet of sediment, which due to the funded and as such same rhetoric within geological studies forbids said sites to even be recognized as that of the past work of intelligent man. Due to this immense age, any human remains that may have been left by these ancient builders would have long turned to dust or have been fossilized at the site. Concealed upon their discovery, or like any site which gains notoriety within mainstream media, secretly revisited and ransacked of any evidence of this incredible age. We believe that possibly the only remaining traces of these past ancestors can now only be found within the most obscure and curious of places, like that of the Altamura Man, for example. A rare fossil, apparently of the genus Homo, 
Discovered in 1993 in the karst sinkhole in the Lama Lunga cave near the city of Altamura within Italy, that thanks to its location and the near impossible feat it would be to remove him, has been left in situ for the world to see, and thanks to where he fortunately lay, has been slowly growing ever since his death. He is quite possibly of an immense age and died an incredibly long time ago and has, instead of slowly decaying away, fading away like the world which he once lived within, has continued to be preserved in the calcite that has grown around him. Remarkably well-preserved but embedded in stalagmites and covered in a thick layer of calcite, the find was left in situ in order to avoid damage. Research during the following 20 years has been based mainly upon documented on-site observations. Consequently, experts have conveniently remained reluctant to agree on a conclusive age, and have thus never arrived at a mainstream consensus on the species it belonged to. In a 2015 paper, published in the Journal of Human Evolution, it was announced that the fossil was apparently a Neanderthal, and dating of the calcite has revealed that the bones are possibly older than 187,000 years old. How old is human civilization? Where do we come from? These questions persist, and as such, so do our endeavors of exposing the truth regarding the reality of these remarkable relics of a now forgotten history. Relics which we find highly compelling. Since the rediscovery of what is unquestionably the most puzzling, astounding, and enigmatic site on Earth, the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx of Giza, we have been led to believe that what could be described as an astonishingly accurate yet somewhat vandalistic later edition was once put there by a caliph named al mamun Now popularly known by its coined title, al mamuns Forced Entrance, this title, although argued as his work, has a pretty compelling tale attached to its possible original purpose. When one actually looks into what an incredible achievement this tunnel once was, it becomes apparent that it was cleverly bored by an ancient people, far more advanced than a 9th century caliph. Additionally, possible hypotheses have been put forth as to its origins by individuals who may have known of entrances into the pyramid. We in the modern world have either lost knowledge of or have been prevented from knowing about their existence. Hinged doorways made of stone perfectly counterbalanced to allow an average-sized man to open and close them. Doorways along the structure's north face that, when closed, become seemingly indistinguishable from its surroundings. Are there still secret entrances along the pyramid's northern side? Quote, the Great Pyramid a little way up on one side, has a stone that may be taken out, which being raised up, there is a sloping passage to the foundations." End quote. Written by Strabo in Pyramids and Temples of Giza, Flinders Petri. Yet regardless of these additional, highly compelling investigative leads put forward in addition to an explanation for the tunnel's existence, its remarkable accuracy remains a tough thing for supporters of academia's tale of events to explain. As author Ralph Ellis puts it, quote, The main problem with the classical explanation was that Mamun's tunnel is rather too accurate for comfort. It tracks into the pyramid in a direct line for the all-important junction between the descending and ascending passageways. It is often cited that Mamun had to turn the tunnel sharp left to discover the original passageways, a fact that Ralph had in the back of his mind when they first visited the Great Pyramid. But he ambled down the forced tunnel, rather mystified, because the left turn cited in the literature could not be found. Having backtracked the tunnel and to try again, that left turn seemed to be no more than a slight widening of the tunnel. In fact, the digging was almost right on target." End quote. For how does one know where one is when deep within the passages of such an incredibly huge ancient structure? Secondly, if instead argued as having been started from without, 
the same problem has to be solved. For how did one know how to create the initial angle? Although it is now the most used entrance and although it has been drawn upon countless plans, to draw an existing tunnel's precise line of descent is far more easier than to have created said precise angle in the first place. And within the Great Pyramid is the remaining half of what has often been used to create a compelling, possible explanation for this tunnel's original purpose. Known as the sarcophagus of Khufu, an anomalous object found within the pyramid, an artifact we have covered in the past. No one can explain how this giant stone object came to be within the pyramid. It would not have fit through the existing entrance tunnels. However, at some time in the pyramid's life, someone smashed into this stone box, took its past contents and the sarcophagus lid, an object that would also have not fit round the turns of the existing tunnel system, yet would have fit through the force tunnel and due to the vandalistic nature of the tunnel itself, could be argued that this damage to the sarcophagi was inflicted by the same group of individuals who built the tunnel one used to extract the so-called sarcophagus's lid. Is this the real past purpose of the tunnel? And if created by a caliph in the 9th century, how did he tunnel so accurately on target? And additionally, where is this lid now? Was this tunnel, like the many different layers of casing stones indicate, built by a later yet also lost civilization? One who flourished far before even the ancient Egyptians? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Many of the most astonishing feats of ancient engineering are often avoided by historians, with many historical research materials absent their existence, due to their unexplainable origins. The reason for this should be obvious, for when one gazes upon such relics, instantly struck with wonder. A curiosity as to how something of such incredible size or skill could have been created by the individuals these sites are often claimed as the work of. This is one of the main theses of the channel, for not only are these sites largely ignored and thus overlooked regardless of being historically important structures, clear yet suppressed evidence that a civilization far more capable than any currently recorded within permitted timelines once flourished on Earth. Relics with a very different origin and indeed history. We believe that such structures were instead rediscovered by the many academically claimed builders, and this is often argued as being supported by empirical archaeological evidence. However, the archaeology merely proves inhabitation, not construction. With a record of construction never found within any of these academically claimed cultures' surviving records, merely having re-inhabited such structures for strategic motivations, and in doing so, left their own archaeological footprint, subsequently concealing an unknown aspect of human history, one which came to an abrupt end and one such site largely unknown by the greater world, is known as the Herodium. What makes this structure so incredible? is not the small arrangement of stone structures within the center of the build, but the earthwork itself, the entire site's footprint, and indeed the volume of earth utilized in the making of this ancient earthwork was of gigantic proportions. A seemingly pyramid-sized volume of earth used in the building of what can only be described as a respectably sized hill made by the hands of ancient man. Once one inspects this site from the air, its huge size becomes apparent, and the incredible feat this once was, an undertaking, if in fact constructed with primitive tools, would have been a task of unimaginable hardship. Thousands of tons of earth were at some point quarried and then transported to this spot, subsequently creating an incredible well-sheltered inhabitation with an intimidating incline on all sides. Many similar earthworks can be found throughout the United Kingdom, with the biggest pyramid in Europe known as Silbury Hill. Mysteriously made completely of chalk, yet this little mentioned site dwarfs Silbury Hill by some measure. The question is, how old is Herodium? Who made it? 
How did they accomplish such a feat? It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Peru undoubtedly has one of the most compelling collection of ancient ruins that can be found anywhere on Earth. A vast collection of astonishingly well-preserved, incredibly ingenious, complex-designed ancient settlements. Infrastructure, irrigation, agricultural designs, with countless others. Often incorporated or accomplished through the creation of precisely executed, purpose-built structures with incredible features to accomplish built-in functions of astonishing ancient contraptions. Contraptions modern man has not only learned about through the building of these sites, but thanks to the brilliant condition of much of ancient Peru, the work of the as forementioned polygonal civilization, one of four lost civilizations which we have personally identified here on the channel in prior videos. Feats of engineering which enabled us to use identified methods and signature stonework to ultimately verify the work of separate civilizations. Which due to modern belief systems and the profit and control this provides to those who profit from said societal infrastructures is actively hidden by a mainstream academia's morally destitute funding structure. Yet, regardless, these sites eventually deciphered and understood by modern studies. Moré, for example, is an ancient ruin that displays the levels of advanced knowledge that the builders once possessed. These step-like designs are also found at Ole Te Tambo among others, although appearing as the steps of giants, were in reality used to acclimatize different plant species often types of crops, herbs, and food producers to a different altitude to where they were native, allowing this ancient civilization to take food-producing plant types high into the mountains. These extraordinary ancient builds, studied by countless talented individuals for many years, have now been decoded and understood in depth, in particular the infrastructure and the fact that it is unquestionably far too advanced to be publicly claimed as the work of the Incans. Thus, this has culminated in the academic world being forced to not only admit this, but do so in such a way that anyone who continues to press the issue soon realizes it is not only a confession in regards to their awareness of past, now lost, once highly advanced ancient civilizations, but is a broad categorization of said ruins as pre-Incan. And just like the incredible network of water channels previously covered, which connect many ancient settlements which allowed water to be pumped from places of abundance to places of drought, providing precious water supplies to countless ancient sites, the Yachtails are yet another collection of incredible ancient structures which you are unlikely to hear about in mainstream historical studies. Yachtails came in many shapes and sizes. These incredible builds were once enormous freezers, not only used to create ice in cooler climates, but to store it during the hotter times of the year. These miraculous inventions, from spiral designs, wind tower designs, and ingenious vent placement designs, all assured cool air would continuously flow into vast underground portions of the structures. This either created ice or allowed ice to be stored and kept in a frozen state for an impressively long time. Refrigeration and the benefits of such were unquestionably understood by the builders of these structures. Yet modern utilization of the same methods of food storage, that being refrigeration via modern technologies, is only a very recent development, with much of the world, until the turn of the century, still salting meats. The question then is, how did this ancient civilization know about the benefits of cool storage? How did they understand how to build these structures? Where did such ideas and ultimate utilizations originate from? Was this knowledge possessed by an even older lost civilization? one in which the members responsible for the Yaktails were once members of? Yaktails, ancient refrigerators, are undoubtedly an incredible aspect of Peru's ancient relics. Relics which we find highly compelling. We have in the past covered a number of the impressive Stone Age relics that can be found all over the globe. 
enormous stone menhirs, henges, and dolmens, nearly all of which have been attributed to our distant Neolithic ancestors. Enormous ancient earthworks, many built with such precision that regardless of the fact that sites like Newgrange, for example, is not only covered in thousands of tons of earth, but also possesses stones used to form its long passageway entrance far into the hundreds of tons, were so accurately placed that the site's entrance, along with many similar sites, are perfectly aligned with the winter solstice, and due to the fact that much of these sites are buried under such enormous volumes of earth, the true size, and indeed undertaking these once were, is still largely unknown and academically underestimated. It seems that for some as yet unknown reason, this supposedly primitive age within the development of the modern man were not only obsessed with solar, planetary, and satellite precisions, but were able to create such monuments with such huge erosion-resistant stone megaliths, so precisely plotted within the local geography, that they display an extraordinarily detailed level of astronomical knowledge. Many said alignments perfectly depicting orbits so complex that we, the modern man, have only very recently learnt ourselves, which has in turn allowed us to understand the coded messages and chart the near-perfect precision behind the motivation of many of the most impressive Neolithic sites. Furthermore, not only do many of their sites across Europe display a tremendously in-depth knowledge of the cosmos, in particular our own solar system. But additionally, dolmens, undoubtedly the second most recognizable and abundant of Neolithic remnants still dotting the planet, left by people of this enigmatic age, displays the same as yet unexplained ability to quarry, lift, and precisely place stones many tons in weight atop one another, seemingly with ease. These stones display a feat that, to this day, regardless of the countless individuals and intellects which have mulled over their existence, have yet to have their placements logically explained by anyone. As such, they remain one of the defining features among countless ruins across the globe that, due to their incorporation into said sites, allows one to identify their presence as the product of lost knowledge and thus lost civilization. Ergo, we feel they are surviving fragments of evidence, left by a far more capable, far more advanced, and thus far older civilization. One now lost to history, or possibly the work of a remnant of a civilization once capable of much more. Due to the primitive nature of many of the Neolithic sites and the stone finishes, they may have been moved and lifted with this lost knowledge yet they all lack the signature tool marks or finishes of more detailed ruins such as Baalbek or Giza. This observation suggests to us that the Neolithic people, although possibly accurately placed chronologically within antiquity, were in reality a surviving remnant of a far older civilization, one which was capable of lifting, building, and most importantly, refining such stones a crucial detail Neolithic ruins lack. It seems these technologies, rather than the lifting techniques utilized by the ancients, became lost and were not within the arsenal of, in our opinion, their possible surviving predecessors, the Neoliths, who, regardless of such, still possessed exquisite astronomical knowledge. Many of these sites are rarely explained, they are often simply attributed to a group without any further explanation. And the Evora megaliths are no exception. Claimed to have been the work of humble farmers some 6,000 years ago, these enormous multi-ton stones, which make up a number of sites within a small corner of Portugal, are to us clearly Neolithic megaliths. They not only display complex solar alignments with solstices, a Neolithic trademark, but to suggest that said stones were somehow sourced, quarried, transported many miles, and ultimately placed in such precise alignments by humble farmers, stones displaying such a detailed awareness of the solar system and weighing such gigantic weights, 
we find preposterous. Not only were the weights of these stones far in excess of what the said people were capable of working or lifting, but to suggest so, we feel, is clear evidence of conspiracy, a concerted effort to hide a huge chunk of our own history, and indeed what these ancient people were trying to tell all of us, from us all. The question is, why would funders of said institutes want to hide these particular truths? What is the motivation for them to hide such information? Who built the hinges of the Avora megaliths? When did they build them? And perhaps, most importantly, what were these ancient people attempting to tell us? Perhaps one day we will find out. They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling. There are many aspects of history that remain unexplained. Many aspects of ancient history that are often overlooked. The mission of our channel is to challenge these views, to encourage critical thinking, for the subjects often at hand require our viewer to, like us, distinguish between that which has and can be explained, and that which is often dismissed or claimed as the work of a civilization simply incapable of such feats. Much of ancient history remains unexplained. This is due to the fact that academia has already attested to knowing nearly all in regards to our past. And as such, Anything which does not support this narrative, a narrative of ape to man and as a species having only successfully achieved a level of societal advancement only once, having developed after the last ice age and never before. Anything contradicting this tale of events is either left out of the history books or claimed as the work of a group far too primitive to have completed such impressive ancient structures. Although much of history is ignored, and as such successfully obscured from mainstream discussions, the physical evidence remains and is far more difficult, if near impossible, to keep hidden. It may be easy for academics to ignore such sites, avoiding having to ever explain their origins, but these often enormous stone relics remain for all to see. And if one applies some effort into researching such curious areas of history, as do we, they will not only witness this mass conspiracy to avoid any discussion or popularization of such exhibits, but will inevitably come to similar conclusions as we have in regards to their inexplicable design, the incredible feats these structures once were, and the advancement that their creators must have attained to have ever completed said sites. However, not only ancient ruins are areas of history that remain unexplained, there also exists events documented within permitted history that remain equally as perplexing and seemingly impossible to logically explain, with the Nanking incident being one such mysterious case. On December 9, 1939, during the Second Sino-Japanese War, a battalion of Chinese soldiers was assigned to a two-mile stretch of foothills as reinforcements in the area of Nanking. The commander of the battalion, Colonel Li Fu Xian, was ordered to prevent the Japanese from getting out of the nearby city. However, several hours after these orders were given, the majority of this battalion, some 3,000 Chinese soldiers, simply vanished without a trace. What makes this disappearance all the more enigmatic is the fact that to this day, no one has been able to explain where they went no remains have ever been found, no evidence of them having abandoned the war, nothing. They simply vanished without a trace. There were simply no signs of them ever found. The remaining soldiers who escaped this fate, a group who were guarding a nearby bridge, later reported that there was no evidence of any battle having taken place, something these individuals placed so close to the disappearance would have heard and the soldiers' guns were all found stacked beside their cooking fires. The question is, what happened to this 3,000-strong group of soldiers? How could they simply vanish without a trace? It remains the most perplexing case of disappearance known to history, and as such, regardless of this event being relatively recent, is undoubtedly highly compelling.